afternoon. How's everybody doing? Well, we are so thrilled to have this conference back again at Google. I know many of you were here with us last year, and I want to give a huge shout out to Beth Sturgeon, who's made um, our hosting you today possible. So thank you, Beth. Um, and we are super lucky at Google. We have some incredible women that work in our sustainability program. I know this morning you got to meet Robin Bass, who kicked us off today. Um, but we are super lucky that we have an incredible group of women that are really leading this program across the company. So we're really glad to be hosting you. So what I wanted to talk about this year, I was really fortunate to get to address this group last year. But this year, I wanted to focus on some really exciting work that we've been doing in a new space, the circular economy. So I'm going to set the stage for you a little bit when we get into that conversation. So as you may know, Humankind is using up natural resources at an astonishing rate, and each year our economy consumes far more than what the planet can provide. So in the 20th century, one indicator of this is that our use of natural resources rose at twice the rate of population growth. And this year, August 8th marked a really interesting date. Does, any, does anyone know what date I'm talking about? August 8th was what we call Earth Overshoot Day. Yes. All right, someone had that in the back. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> so essentially what this mean is, means is that since August 8th, we've been operating in an ecological deficit. We've been drawing down natural resources and putting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than we can absorb. So basically that means we're consuming 1.5 times what the Earth can provide. And that's just in 2016. If you look at some of the projections about where we're going in the future, for example, the World Economic Forum predicts that by 2030, we'll have 3 billion new middle-class consumers. And so when I hear these sobering statistics, it really makes me think we need to fully re-examine the economic model that we've had since the Industrial Revolution. And what we believe at Google is that we can make this shift in the 21st century and that this shift really needs to be led by business and that we can change this model to operate in such a way that we can improve people's lives while reducing our dependence on primary materials and energy from fossil fuels. And this is really the promise of a circular economy, which is taking this take, make, dispose model of the Industrial Revolution and really flipping it it's on its head and saying, how do we unendingly cycle materials through both biological and technical cycles in a way that's restorative and regenerative for the environment? And so last year at Google, we made a commitment that we really wanted to fully implement these practices across our infrastructure, our operations, and our culture. And it's been really interesting to see how this discussion of circular economy has evolved here in the US over the last year. Uh, you know, when I left the White House in July 2015, I actually had never had anybody come to talk to me about the circular economy. But what I think we've seen is that this has become a really hot topic in sustainability circles. I don't know if other people feel that way, but I feel like I'm almost every day kind of getting an email in my inbox on this topic. Um, and, and I think it's really a couple of reasons why this is really starting to pe speak to people in our field. I think first it's as we look at these exciting new commitments like the Paris Agreement that of course just went into effect and COP22 starting on Monday, the Sustainable Development Goals, I think these are all signs that there's a recognition that we need to have a different model for prosperity in the 21st century. And the other reason why I think circular economy is becoming a really exciting topic is the potential to unlock new value from waste streams and the, all the different new double bottom line business models that this could really offer us. And I don't know if you've seen this research, but an organization that we work closely with, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, that's really a thought leader in this space, they did a study of the economic potential for the circular economy by 2030 in Europe. And they found that there was a value of 1.8 trillion that could be realized through these principles. So imagine what that might look like in the US. But I also feel like because this is becoming a hot topic, we're at a really critical juncture where we need to make sure this isn't just sort of a new buzzword for recycling, but that we're actually really pushing to change the economic models that we're operating on. So as you can tell, I'm excited about this topic. So I wanted to come talk to you guys about it today. And I wanted to share with you kind of how we're thinking about this inside of Google. So we're really looking at it based on kind of four major principles. 
We're looking at operating on renewable energy. We're looking at how we can design out waste. We're thinking in systems, and we're thinking in cascades. So renewable energy. This has been a major focus for us really since the beginning. In 2007, we committed to become a carbon neutral company. In 2010, we started buying renewables at scale. And now, this year, we are the largest corporate non-utility buyer of renewable energy in the world. And so what that means, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. So we have about 2.6 gigawatts of renewable energy on contract. And so what that means is essentially the equivalent of taking a million cars off the road per year. And, and really what's exciting is that's taking us yet one step closer to our ultimate goal, which is to operate on 100% renewable energy. And in addition, we've been focused for many years on um, purchasing renewable energy. Uh, not only have we been purchasing renewable energy, but we've also been investing. We've invested about $2.5 billion in projects around the world. And we've also been looking at ways we can use Google technology to help many more people become adopters of renewable energy. So this, what you see on my slide here, is Project Sunroof, which is a tool we launched last year that enables homeowners in 42 states to type in their address. And then in the background, we're using Google technology, all the information we have through Google Earth to tell you, are you a good candidate for solar? And then connect you with a developer who can help you take that next step. So designing out waste. In our global data center operations, we have 15 data centers around the world. We have been very focused on how do we design waste out of those systems. So already, six of those 15 data centers are diverting 100% of waste from landfill. And a couple months ago, we made a pretty audacious commitment, which is we want to operate zero waste to landfill across the board in all those data center operations. And this for us is really kind of a step on that circular economy journey because that last 10 to 20% of diversion is often where it gets hard, but that's the place where we can design out waste from the beginning and where we can partner with communities. So we're very actually excited about that potential. And sorry, I didn't click through my slide. There you go. <laughs> um, and the other place we've been really focused on waste is actually here in the Bay Area. So you got to eat in one of our cafes this afternoon. We've been looking not only at traditional solutions like composting, uh, but we've also been using technology. So we have a great tool we use called Lean Path, which enables us to prevent pre-consumer waste. And so just here in the Bay Area this year with this tool, we've avoided a million pounds of waste. And the other place that, for us, systems thinking really comes into play is our data centers. And so there's two really interesting uh, stories about how we are using circular economy principles in our data center operations. So what you see here is our servers. And these are the same servers that help deliver you your Gmail, enable you to watch your favorite cat video. But what you may not know is that these servers are actually an incredible example of how we're deploying circular economy at scale. So through maintenance, refurbishment, redistributing through secondary markets and recycling, we're saving hundreds of millions of dollars a year and we're avoiding a huge amount of natural resources. And we're also experimenting with machine learning. So this is the same technology that's in your smartphone assistant, allows Google Photos to recognize, you know, let you search for a hat. But we're also using the same technology, the ability to use an algorithm to learn a system for energy efficiency. So in this case, in our data centers, by applying the same technology, we've been able to save 40% on our cooling. And that would be extraordinary in any system, but we had already been focused for about 10 years on energy efficiency. So that has been an incredible breakthrough for us. And why we're excited about this is not only so we can operate more efficiently, but what this shows about the potential for machine learning in any industrial setting, or even potentially for grid management. So this is a really exciting potential from our perspective. And lastly, cascades. So really for us, since the very beginning, we've been focused on how do we create the healthiest environments possible. And we've built two technology tools. One is called Portico, which we've built with a great partner, HBN, which enables us to really have project teams work together to bring the healthiest materials possible into our building projects. And the second is Quartz, which is an open database that's intended to really fill the health information gap. It has information about 100 different building products. So for us, you know, as you can tell, our approach to circular economy has really been about how do we open source 
our approach? How do we use technology to drive towards this new system? But we also really feel like we've only just begun. And our ultimate vision is really to become a global reference point in the built environment for a circular economy, to be a technology provider of realizing this new model, to take a leadership position through sharing our best practices and really to engage in policy. And ultimately, I think we truly believe that businesses can lead the way to improving people's lives while reducing our dependence on primary materials and fossil fuels. Thanks so much.